Atlantic on alert for more hurricanes in the next week or two on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for August 31st. So we have uh, a couple of systems active. Uh, the strongest storm right now is actually in the North Indian Ocean. Tropical storm Asna forming the other day and moving into the Arabian Sea. It was uh, hanging around off the coast of India for a good while and Pakistan. Uh, and we also have two tropical depressions elsewhere, including Shan Shan, what's left of it. Well, it's day 92 of Atlantic hurricane season and we've marked two areas of interest, a 40% chance in the main development region, a 30% chance behind it. National Hurricane Center also notably marking another system in the Gulf of Mexico, a 20% chance and an interesting little feature there off the coast of Texas and Louisiana right now. Day 109 in the Eastern Pacific, Hone lives on, has actually outlived the, its uh, friends, Gilmer and Hector. They're both dead now, but Hone continues as a depression and is actually expected to intensify again. In the Western Pacific, Shan Shan continues to linger over central Japan, but we have three other areas of interest. Uh, a high chance, 70% for that system, 92W near the Philippines, heading towards there, and two 20% chances over there, mainly due to uncertainty. Looks like we may well get one of those forming. 60% uh, for this area of interest as well in the Bay of Bengal, aside from Asna, so it's all go in the North Indian Ocean, uh, that system has a a decent shot of strengthening as well briefly before it moves into India. And in the southwest Indian Ocean things are very quiet here, not much going on, just a little bit of cloud cover, one or two storms over the Seychelles. So our feature is still Shan Shan, there's still plenty of gale advisories out there at this time and it could actually briefly re-strengthen uh, almost all of Oita province there, uh, gale advisory as well for pretty much large parts of Kyushu and extending up through large parts of Honshu and the whole of Shikoku which is right next to right now. 34 kilometers from Moroto, 54 from Kochi, 168 from Okayama, 232 from Osaka and 363 from Nagoya. What's left of this system will continue eastwards, may stall a little bit and then strengthen slightly before ramming back into the coast of Japan in a couple of days. So let's take a look at some satellite imagery. First of all, we are looking at, I think this is the Atlantic. Um, I'm not actually sure what we're looking at here. I think that's that system uh, on the left-hand side uh, in the Atlantic there that is starting to uh, take a little bit of shape. Uh, that currently system is down to 10, 11 millibars. And this is Shan Shan moving through Japan right now. Just off Shikoku there, um, the imagery has glitched out a little bit towards the end of that loop, uh, but you can clearly see there's still quite a bit of convection blowing up, so certainly uh, could be on course for still some heavy rainfall, mainly east of the center of the system. So that's pushing through central Japan, very high populations in these areas, um, a good 80 million people between the storm and the other side of Tokyo. Now looking at the rainfall there on the radar, you can see the storm continuing as well. Looks like the center is actually further east now on those latest radar frames. So this is a look at Asna on the left hand side there, very interesting looking system, certainly got some decent cloud tops on the southern side but the centre of the system still looking a little bit bare. You can see the other system there on the right hand side as well, a very sheared high convection system uh, which may well have a centre of circulation as well. Here's a close up float of view of Asna there, looks like about maybe a 24 hour loop there or 12 hour at least and you can see how the storm has been evolving, uh, partially exposed circulation surrounded by a significant crust of cloud tops on that southern side. Uh, within that probably winds of up to 50 miles per hour, uh, certainly the heaviest of rainfall is on that southern side which is obviously facing away from land but some of the coastal regions of Pakistan probably still getting some substantial rainfall amounts including in the major city of Karachi. 
This is Hone, uh, what's left of it. It actually may well be a remnant low looking at that imagery. It's a real question mark and subjective view as to whether that convection is sustaining enough and close enough to the center to still consider it a tropical cyclone. Uh, and yet we are still expecting it to take shape again and strengthen as it moves northwards and stalls around a little bit out there in the North Pacific near the international dateline. This is Invest 92W moving across uh, and away from Palau there, that island uh, chain at the bottom of the screen. And just to the left-hand side, slightly off shot, will be the Philippine Islands. This system continuing mainly westwards at the moment, but we are expecting a significant northerly turn shortly, and then eventually recurvature out to the northeast. Here's the east coast of the United States, and there's a little frontal system there off the coast, and another uh, big chain of cloud moving across the central US. Of course, there's that system there that looks almost like a tropical cyclone off the uh, Gulf Coast. You can just see the bottom half of it there, um, and some storms blowing up in western Florida right now. Looking at the coast of Africa, moving out into the eastern Atlantic, there's a little system there near uh, Cape Verde. That could be that second system that we're looking out for as well. In the eastern Pacific, there is a little bit of rotation on that system moving off the coast of Costa Rica. Uh, there is a potential for a surface low in the eastern Pacific in the next few days, but we aren't expecting any new tropical cyclones. Just uh, another generally cloudy picture there, a few areas of cloud, I should say. Uh, amongst clearer spots certainly the Baja California Peninsula not much going on there and in the Western Pacific again you can see that very broad system at the bottom there that's 92W and that potential two other systems maybe either side of it west and east Looking again at that convection really bubbling up on this side of that area of interest off the coast of India. Uh, the centre is quite exposed though. And there's another view once again of ASDA. Uh, gradual movement towards the west-northwest at this time uh, before it will gradually swivel around towards the southwest and potentially reach Oman. Sea surface temperatures still very warm off the coast of Mexico, 30 to 32 degrees Celsius in a few spots there, although the open water is a little bit cooler now. The Atlantic, Gulf of Mexico, is piping hot, especially further west and actually southwest at this point, up to 32 degrees Celsius once again in the large parts of the Caribbean too. And the Gulf Stream, temperatures looking very good across the Atlantic. West Pacific is still baking as well uh, from Taiwan and either side of it there extending through the northern part of the South China Sea and through the East China Sea and around Japan. Even after Shan Shan those temperatures haven't decreased that much. North Indian Ocean, where Asda is, those temperatures around 26 to 27 degrees Celsius at least and in the Bay of Bengal warmer there close to 30. Compared to average, the anomalies are very high in the Atlantic. Look at that, the whole ocean there, even after Ernesto now, that effect has dis disappeared. Westpac, a little bit of a cold anomaly there from Shan Shan, but in general, still extremely warm above average, especially in those upper latitudes near Japan and Korea. Eastern Pacific is neither here nor there. A few warm spots, but some cooler spots there as well. North Indian Ocean is running a little bit above average. Oceanic heat content is still looking rather good in the Western Pacific, although it has decreased a little bit there, especially further out to sea, uh, but certainly increased around Taiwan, looking good through the Ryukyu Islands. Eastern Pacific uh, has dropped a little bit, except off the very... Uh uh, initial coastline there of Mexico. Atlantic Ocean looking good as well, mainly in the Caribbean and in the Gulf of Mexico, also around the Bahamas, but look out towards the open Atlantic there, all those blues and greens, really quite useful for these storms. Decent amounts of energy, especially if there's anything moving towards the Caribbean, which there will be soon. Speaking of which, this is the GFS forecast over the next five days. You'll see that little low there on the left-hand side moving into the Caribbean. That's that 40% that we're giving. Uh, GFS doesn't fully form that, at least initially, within that five-day period. That second system seems to disappear. Look out for that one as well. Rotation near Cape Verde there to the south, and then gradual movement towards the west, I think, although we do sort of lose track of it, so that's why it's got a smaller chance, although some odd models do have a better fortune for it. Here's the Western Pacific now looking off Japan and you can see what's left of Shan Shan strengthening again briefly there. Tropical storm force through Shikoku. Then there's that second system 92W strengthening as it moves off the northeast of the Philippines into another typhoon. On the right hand side you'll see Hone there strengthening again moving northwards then uh, swiveling around quite a bit 
uh, gets caught up in steering currents there I think and then eventually moves northwards and starts to try and move poleward and then it recurve. In the Indian Ocean we have these two systems of course ASNA is established strengthens a little bit further and then weakens quite a bit when it gets close to Oman of course very difficult conditions for storms over there and then that system in India uh, briefly tries to develop possibly tropical storm force winds certainly heavy rainfall does it get the circulation sorted out with the convection uh, it will be a question mark I think uh, but certainly a decent chance that it will happen that's why we've just hedged our bets at 60% chance for that to develop. Western Pacific rainfall expectations for the next seven days are also going to be locally high in a few areas, particularly in parts of the Philippines and in central Japan, which is where Shanshan Shan is currently. Eastern tip of Shikoku moving through central Honshu there around the Nagoya area um, and Osaka uh, potentially getting some significant rainfall amounts especially on the mountains but look at the Philippines some of those exposed areas there as well up to 25 inches of rain in the next seven days that's a pretty extraordinary amount over 600 inches and in Japan there maximums of 300 uh, millimeters I said inches before but I meant millimeters uh, in the next seven days now this is the Atlantic, uh, a low pressure system there getting quite strong. Is that tropical? Not sure, but certainly harassing the New England coast. And then we have this other system, of course, that is the one that we have been tracking, the 40% chance for the Caribbean developing into a sturdy storm there as it moves westwards. Looks like it tries to relocate there and then it forms near the Cayman Islands and then on towards the Yucatan, uh, becoming possibly a borderline hurricane there. Western Pacific, this next typhoon moving up, becoming very powerful. Category 4 once again there through the Ryukyu Islands. And then there's two systems either side of it as well trying to develop two. One of them gets sucked in to that typhoon. The other one staying out towards the east there and strengthening a little bit too. Hone right up there towards the right hand side becoming a typhoon as well possibly. And then starts to turn eventually northwards, northeastwards. Almost reaches Alaska before turning post-tropical remarkably as well. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force of the Team merch store where you can take a look at all our items as well as our full season and individual storm animations. And now that we've had Hone, you can tell the world that you waited all of that time for that damn thing to form. Well, in the Silly Range, this is something the GFS and other models has been throwing up in the Atlantic for a while now. A very powerful hurricane developing somewhere in the Gulf. This time, it's calling for Central Texas. The previous model run called for the Florida Panhandle. The one before that called for it to be Western Louisiana. So it could be anywhere along that northern Gulf Coast if this takes uh, flight as it does there. Uh, that's a Category 4 landfall, by the way, in Central Texas. That would be... Uh, really uh, destructive uh, so we're going to have to keep watching for that one very closely this is long range that's that big typhoon moving into china that would be a massive problem as well that second storm uh, moving along the coast of japan too eventually being sucked off towards the east then this other system another massive typhoon there category four uh, heading eventually towards taiwan that's in the silly range that's a brand new system there that forms near the micronesian islands it is absolutely open season in the western pacific right now and certainly we're getting uh, quite a lot of storms at this point and quite a few more look like they're going to form too uh, a comparatively quiet scene in the western pacific on this day in 2019 but the atlantic of course had this doozy of a storm of course it was hurricane dorian which was about to reach category 5 status in the early hours of September the 1st. Local time it was still August 31st actually. It was making its final run up towards the coast of the northern Bahamas. Of course an extremely devastating storm reached category 5 status and it made landfall in the morning of September 1st. Of course we covered it extensively live on Force 13. Well, back to today, and in Rockwell, it's been five years since that storm. The next name in the Atlantic is Francine. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Iliana, and in the Central Pacific, of course, now it's Iona after Hurricane Hone. Will it be Hurricane slash Typhoon? That would be an interesting one. Well, in the Western Pacific, next stop is Yagi. We may get that quite soon. And in the North Indian Ocean, now the next name is Dana, or Dana. I'm not sure which one that is followed by Fengal. 
in the Australian region. The next name is Robin. The Southwest Indian Ocean is Ansha. And in the South Pacific, it is Pitta in the Southern Hemisphere. Hopefully we're back to normal with our schedule. And I hope to see you again with another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow night. Become an ultimate fan today.